Hi everyone, it's Stella here from Why Not Stitches and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you a few ways to start and finish your thread without using any knots. I start with my favorite method first. I'm using it when I have an area that will be covered by stitching later. So, bring your needle up through the fabric and leave a small tail at the back. Hold the tail with your thumb finger and come back very close to where you started. Create a small stitch just above the tail. The smaller the stitch is, the more secure the thread is going to be. This is how it looks now. Then, create another small stitch close to the first one. It looks pretty neat and secure. Now you can begin your stitching, but don't forget to cut the tail off, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm using this method every time I want to fill a shape and every time I start a new thread. It's very useful and I love this one because it doesn't leave any bumps on the back of my embroidery. Once your thread is about to finish, turn the hoop over and weave the thread a few times around existing stitches. But please, don't exaggerate because it can leave ugly bumps. Cut off the tail as close as you can. I guess you have to try it a few times until you master it. Let's say you need to add another color for shading. I'm going to show you how I anchor my thread on existing stitches. I'll let you watch this without any explanations because it's very similar to how we started. If by now you found useful information in this tutorial, go ahead and click the like button so YouTube can recommend it to other stitchers like yourself. This second method is great if you are starting on a line. Go ahead and start right at the beginning, leaving a tail on the back of the fabric, as we did before. While holding it gently, start your stitching keeping an eye at the back of your hoop. need to catch the tail in the first loop of your stitch. Then repeat the last step a few more times and when you feel like it's secured, cut off the tail as close as you can. If you like my video and want to support me create more useful tutorials like this, subscribe to my channel and follow my journey.
once you want to finish the thread, turn the hoop over and weave the thread a few times around existing stitches. You really need to try this to decide what works best for you. Let's do another method. Start on the line and make one or two tiny tiny stitches a little bit away from the starting point. Hold the tail and begin your stitching as you would normally do. While stitching, keep an eye on the thread in the back and catch that tail in the first loop of your stitches. As in my first example, the tiny stitches will be covered with stitching as you work your piece. Sometimes, if you don't cut off those little tails of thread on the back, it can get messy and frustrating. Now I want to finish off my thread, but because this line I've embroidered is too short for me to go again, weaving in the same place as I wove earlier, and I also want to avoid creating those ugly bumps, I will secure the thread on the closest shape I've embroidered earlier. This last method I want to show you is called the away knot. Tie a basic knot at one end of the thread. Decide where you want to start your embroidery and stick the needle from the front of your fabric about 4 or 5 inches away from where you want to begin. That's why it's called the away knot. Then you go up and begin your stitching. This long thread on the back should be out of your way, otherwise it can get accidentally tangled between your stitches. Let's say you want to end the thread at this point. Turn the hoop over and weave your thread a few times around existing stitches and cut the thread off. Oops, it's not a problem, I'll fix it later. Now I want to show you how to deal with that away knot. Pull the knot and cut it gently without damaging the fabric. Flip the hoop and thread your needle as you usually do. You can do this step just before starting another thread or when your shape is done. Run a few stitches around existing ones just the same way you did before. These are the methods I know, but I use just two of them. I know that it can be overwhelming as a beginner to trust your guts when it comes to securing the thread. I highly suggest you to try each one of the methods and use them alternatively until you stick with one or two methods for different situations. I wish you happy stitching!